hands towards them. As we pray for these beautiful children of today. Hallelujah. Continue to pray for our nation. How many of you are praying for our America, the United States? The big thing when you pray for America, pray for true repentance. True repentance, because that's what God is showing me that uh, true repentance is going to be the key to revival as far as the country. As far as the church, the devil's doing everything he possibly can to destroy the works of the Lord. Um, and it's like a picture that I, I had a 
a prophecy that was that I was listening to, and it made so much sense. And, he, and in the prophecy, there was uh, an eagle. I mean, how many of you know the eagle? I, I'm an, I, I love eagles. I have pictures of eagles in my office. I have, you know, statues of eagles. And um, an eagle, uh, of course, God said, you know, moms up your wings as eagles, not like turkeys. Amen. But like eagles, because they're powerful beings, they're powerful. But the eagle also represents America. And I saw the eagle um, with his left wing kind of damaged. And it was flying only using the right one. Because his left wing was down. And the left wing had um, actually the American flag wrapped around like a band-aid. Because the left wing was down. And then and just using the right, and it was, he was always flying, but he was struggling. And I believe that's how America is right now. The left is trying to destroy the right. Amen. If you know the left wing movement is really, really trying to destroy America. And so we need to pray. The next election is going to be the most important election ever. We need to get out and vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You need to pray and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, of course, you pray. The guidelines that you always pray for, what are their views on abortion? What are their views on the biblical values? Look at the biblical values. If they line up with the biblical values, that's who you pray for. Whether it's a senator, congressman, I don't know who they are. But that's what you pray for. You can't be a believer in God and pray for someone to throw abortion. Amen. Right? Amen. So, uh, we got to pray for the biblical values. And uh, so this country is really being hit hard. But we got to pray. And there's, they've done everything they can to destroy it. And uh, so we got to pray for the protection over our leadership over our president. We've got to pray for protection. They've tried everything, trust me. And, you know, uh, there's even talk about assassinations. Really? And uh, we don't want that to happen, of course. And God can reverse it. It's going to, re it's going to be reversed if we repent. Amen. And we ask God for protection. I pray you pray for protection. Protection over our leaders. Amen? And uh, that, that's been a big thing for me for, to pray for that in that area. So pray for that and uh, continue to pray for, again, this coronavirus, of course, to subside and, and go away forever. Yeah. Amen? And yeah. never come back. And, uh, and I guarantee you, miraculously, it will disappear by election time. Yeah. Watch. All of a sudden. <laughs> Right? So, there's a lot of conspiracies going on out there. But the big, big, biggest conspiracy right now is against God's people, too. And God's people need to stand for righteousness. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we're going to pray. I want you to, uh, I'm going to ask for prayer, but, you know, for some certain people, certain situations. But can we keep on praying for Richard? Richard is doing better. Amen. He's getting healthier, you know? I got a chance to speak to Sharon again. And, and, and I, when I called, this was still, he was kind of napping, so I didn't get a chance to speak to him. But he called me back and left a message that he was having that I called. And uh, of course, Chuck, Chuck was here last Saturday, and you saw the condition that he was in. He said he's having a hard time, you know, moving around under the circumstances of the physical situation. But we're going to believe for a miracle in Chuck's life. Amen. Amen. And Marie, so continue to pray for them. And uh, continue to pray for our congregation and the people. All right? Uh, anybody have a prayer request? Yes. Fort Hood. Fort Hood. Of course, of course. The, uh, one thing that I also want to pray for uh, is uh, Dorinda sent me an email yesterday, and I posted it on Facebook, not the email, but I, 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 the, uh, there's an article on um, Fort Hood 
Uh, Fort Hood, uh, for some reason, uh, if you remember Fort Hood, that's where the massacre took place in 2009, where servicemen got killed. A serviceman killed a serviceman, and he was an Arab. And uh, for some reason, in that, uh, that base in Fort Hood, uh, it's an army base, there's a lot of things going on there. There's, uh, I think there's demonic activity. Uh, so we need to pray for those people. And of course, Robert, you know, Dorinda's son, and he's a member of our congregation who grew up in this church. He's, a, he's stationed there, so we gotta pray. There's suicide going on, there's sexual assaults going on, uh, all kinds of activities that are happening. Why Foot Hood? It must be some demonic activity. Soldiers and officers who have never, ever once in their lifetime career, never been disciplined, they get to Fort Hood, all of a sudden, they start to act out, something happens there. I, there is a demonic spirit on that base. Sure. Nobody will convince me that there's not. Yeah. And I ran into a young couple at the park last Sunday, and um, her father was in the Army and stationed at Fort Hood when she was young, and they loved it. She and her husband now are in the Air Force. I guess there's an air base near there too, mm -hmm. and they went to visit it, and she said it felt weird. She goes, mm. I didn't even want to go there, I left. Mm. Look at that. So, yeah, that, you know, how many of you know the uh, demonic activity is territorial? You know, they take territory. They do. So, you gotta pray. You gotta pray for, uh, you know, those uh, for those people over there for Hood. I pray for protection over Robin and all that. And yes. I was gonna say, uh, Look at that. While he was there. Yeah, look at and, that. And um, he's doing better now, seeing a counselor. He didn't have any issues until he got to that base. Right. And he is now going through the process of getting medically discharged because of the Look at that. Home. You know, and that's and, it's, it's, and not that he hasn't left the military, and I'm proud that he served the military. It's an honor to serve your country. Sure. Please Amen. don't get me wrong. Sure. But there's something over, not just that base. I think there's just something over our, our whole Absolutely. military that yeah. is just yeah, the armed forces always get attacked. You know, I mean, yeah. they have to deal with all kinds of activities. You know, and PTSD is one thing that most soldiers deal with when they have trauma happening to them. You know, and and that that's an attack that's ongoing. You know, so pray for servicemen, of course, all over the world. There's there's a lot of suicide all over, as far as the, a lot of servicemen, are, you know, in general. So we gotta pray for that because the enemy. Let me, uh, you know, he's, he's, don't forget, he's, he's on a leash. Amen. His time is short. Right. Okay? He knows he's, he's doomed for eternity. Yes. All right? He knows his, 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 he's doomed and that nature for him is, is eternal. But, of course, you have to understand also, because of that, he's going to try to take out as many of, of God's people as possible. Amen. Okay? He wants to take them out. Somehow, some way, he'll use whatever buttons he needs to push. Suicide, drugs, uh, you know, child trafficking. Child trafficking is happening now more than ever. I mean, they, they're, they're, I mean it, it's become a $1.75 billion business. Okay? It's become a billion dollar business to, to again, rob these children off the streets. And they go to these neighborhoods and they pick them out of everywhere. Uh, from the mall, they're kidnapping girls. I mean, as young as seven, eight, five years old, and putting them into prostitution and doing all kinds of things that it's, it's just demonic. It's a demonic activity. And the devil knows how to, how to attack. He knows how to attack the youth. And the youth has been, you know, come on. They, they go to a, a lot of trauma, too, in school, and bullying, and cyberbullying. All kinds of things. Suicide within the, the, the teenage realm. You know, you gotta pray for those children after every single day. And, and encourage them. This is the time to bring your children to church every time you, the doors are open. Pray for them. Consecrate ourselves to the Lord. This is not the time to play. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. All right? All right, let's, let's get on. Prayer request. Yes. She had surgery, my, you know, it was surgery, but she had surgery, and she's doing better. She's doing better. 
Yes. 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 Yes
and all the praise in Yeshua's mighty name. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's worship our God, our King. Amen. Because he's on the throne. Hallelujah. <laughs>
and it's not by power, it's not by your own might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh.
one more time. He is a faithful God. Come on. Put your hands together and give him praise. Come on. That's what we call for. Come on now. Give him praise. He's been faithful. No matter what, hallelujah not. He's always faithful. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Okay. I'm going to have my wife come and pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We got our new mics. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Before I pray, I want to read a little scripture to you. <clears throat> not a little scripture. Uh, not a little scripture, a good scripture. One that you're very familiar with. But in reading it, and then I had someone else confirm it. Um, Second Chronicles 7, okay, and it's, um, you know the, the scripture, 7, 12, it's my people, but we always go, we read from, um, where do we start reading? And then the people that are in charge of that, that 
own a part of Netflix. Big high up, show on people, they don't care. They want to bring us down and bring young women down and bring every, everything. And God is like, please, he's still begging us. The word is alive today. He's still asking us, please, it's my people. Humble yourselves. Pray, seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. You know what wicked means? Wicked means knowing that something is wrong, but you're still doing it. Amen. And you don't care. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's a little adultery. It's okay. I, I, I'm not happy with my husband, so it's okay if I have an affair. It's, a, it's okay if I'm living. It's okay if I'm... No, it's wickedness. It's witchcraft. And I'm telling you guys, this is no joke. If we, it's up to us. It is up to us to pray. See my face. He's asking us. He's telling me. He's saying, Evelyn, if you pray, if you seek my face, if you turn from your wicked ways, Evelyn, and seek my face, then you're going to hear from heaven. And I'm going to heal your land. Amen. So it's that. It's me. And today is the, uh, the national day. Is it? No, it's not a national day of prayer. They're having a prayer, I think, in, um, is it next week or this? Oh, it's next week. Next Saturday. So, you know, join with those people. If you want to join me here after stuff, I don't know about after service. Well, I have another little thing going on after service. But that night, if you do want to join me here, we'll pray. We'll put it on. I don't know how we can do that, honey. And we can pray together. It doesn't matter the size of the community. It matters the prayers. Amen. God doesn't care. He, he wants real, genuine prayers. Yes. We need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for our children. We need to pray for our families. We need to pray for our congregations. We need to really pray. We, it, it's, it's getting worse. We just when I think it's not, and I look at it, I go, oh my God, what is going on now? It's worse. It's worse. So I, 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 wanted, I wanted you to know that also that you people say, oh my God, what's going on? It, it was going on before. Amen. Child sacrifice, they would do things with children. They were killing them children, like the, the abortions, but everything, everything that they're doing, they, they're doing now, they did it then. And God has been faithful. But there comes a time where, as a parent, you say, well, you know what? Now you're going to have to deal with it. Amen. And we don't want that. We don't want God to take his hands off of us. So please, join me in prayer. Pray. Don't just pray when you have a problem. When it's Pray for others. Pray for others. And you know what? I know that it's hard sometimes because we have our own problem, our own issues, our own family issues, our own children issues, our own financial issues. But you know what? Sometimes it's good to forget about that and let's concentrate on what's going on in the world. Amen. It is not good. And let's pray for those in authority over us. Whoever they are. We pray for all of them. They all need the Lord. So we're going to pray now. And I just... Who did you tell me to pray for? Did you pray for Natalie? Okay, so we're just going to lift her up again. Natalie and the Calder family. Donna's still in the hospital. Her whole family got COVID. The daughter lost the taste and the smell. The husband had it, Jeff had it, but he's better. And and, and um, Jonathan, they were here a couple of weeks ago. They visited, and um, Jonathan, thank God, nothing. So she's still in the hospital, and I haven't called her because I wanted her to rest. She was in BCU, so I think that's pulmonary something. Yeah, pulmonary. So, yeah, yeah and so I, I, I'm going to call her today, and I'm going to give her all our love from us. Please lift that family up in prayer. Therefore, therefore, for the grace of God, go we. You know? So let's just lift them up and lift my Natalie up. And I just found out that my husband, please don't ever give my husband a message to give to me or anything. <laughs> Call me or text me because I did not know that my Dorinda's son was going through something. Okay? Because my husband forgets to tell me. And it's okay because he has a lot on his mind. I'm not blaming him, he counsels, he, during the week he's so busy, but still. But I want to pray for him and lift him up and the family. And um, I just want us all to agree in prayer. Amen. 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 So Heavenly Father, we love you. We yes. thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word that it's always a reminder to us that we're not alone. 
that you haven't forgotten us, that you won't forsake us. If we seek you, you will answer us, and you are there for us. You're our Abba Father, you're our Heavenly Father. So Lord, we yes. just pray for each and every person that I mentioned, Lord. Amen. Touch their bodies from the front of their head to the soles of their feet. Lord, I lift up, Lord God, to you, our nation today, Lord. Lord, please forgive us, Lord. We humble ourselves, Lord. We turn from our wicked ways, Lord. We want to seek your face, oh God. We want to see your hands upon this land, oh God. In the midst of the fires, in the midst of the killing, in the midst of the chaos, Lord, in the midst of a pandemic, Lord, we want to know, Lord, that you are with us. And if you be for us, Lord, who can be against us, Heavenly Father? So, Lord, we just thank you. We just pray, Lord God, that you will continue to be with us. Lord, we lift up each and every official, Lord God, from the president down all the way, Lord God. Lord, we lift them up to you, oh God. And we pray to have your will in their life, oh God. Lord, we lift up our police department, our fire department, Lord God. Father, we lift for you every Lord life that is on the edge, Lord God. Because they all matter to us, Lord God. They all are important, Lord God. Father, we know that you are able, Lord, to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we could ask or think, Lord, according to your power that works to us. So, Lord, I pray that you will put the right people in position, Lord, that you will turn it around. Father, everything, Lord, I ask you today, Lord, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen. that every single dart that the enemy has tried to throw from the pandemic to the rioting, through the police, through the killing, through the abuse of black people, Lord God, put by the police officers that are no good because there's a few that are no good, the rest are good. Lord, I pray that everyone that is not good, Father, they come out. You, you, pick, you pull them out. You show them, let them come out now, Lord God. Every assignment, Lord, that has been, Lord God, thrown at us, Lord God. May he have a boomerang effect and go back, Lord God. Father, all those in Congress that are lying, cheating, stealing from the president all the way down to the last one. If they're lying, if they're cheating, if they're conniving, if they're, if they're doing bad things, Lord, bring it to the light. Your word says that everything that is sin must come to the light. So bring it to the light, oh God. Bring it to the light. Bring it to the forefront, Lord God. Let everything that needs to be exposed, be exposed. Lord, we trust you. We believe in you. We love you, oh God. We come before you humbly, Lord God, asking these things, Lord God. Touch our people that are sick. Touch the congregations that are truly serving you, Lord God. Father, we pray against those congregations that are promoting abortion, Lord. That are promoting sin same-sex marriage, Lord. It is abomination to you. We love the homosexual. We hate the sin, yes. Lord. We cannot tolerate it no more. Lord, clean us. Cleanse us. Lord God, purge us, Lord God. Convict us when we're wrong. Convict us when we think. Convict us when we say things that are not of you, O oh God. So, Father, we love you. We cry out to you. We believe in you. We believe that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. We believe, Lord God, that we are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We believe, Lord God, that if you be for us, who could be against us? They can riot all they want and tea fund, Black Lives Matter, and whoever else they want to do. But they cannot fight against you. Because greater, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. Lord God, put them to shame, oh God. Send your angels, send troops of angels, Lord God, to do our bidding, oh God. So, Father, we just pray for this service today. Father, we pray that everything that is said and done here be all of you and none of us. Lord, let the word fall on fertile ground. Father, when the enemy comes, even when we're walking out of here to try to pull it out of us, oh God, let your word arise within us, Lord. Father, we thank you, and we ask also, Lord, for this pandemic. We ask for COVID-19. A miracle. Amen. We ask that it will disappear yes, the same way that it came. Amen. Father, go back to hell. Send them back to hell. Amen. Send that pandemic COVID-19 back to hell. Amen. The pit of hell. That, Father, my prayer is that even the sight
scientists, even the doctors will say, we don't know what happened. It, it disappeared. This is, it's, it's nothing. And Father, that every person, even now that is affected by it, will be totally and completely healed. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, oh God. Father, we thank you, Lord. If there's anything with vaccines, if there's anything, if, there, if there's anything that they're trying to put on us, that they're trying to make us take, Lord God, that they're trying to convince us, Lord God, that they're trying to put, we come against fear in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And we speak faith. We speak faith. We thank you, Lord God, that if there's anything in those vaccines that is going to hinder us or hinder our children, Lord, like I heard today, under three, over three years old, they want to start giving them, Lord, if there's anything in those vaccines that is not of you, Lord God, get this out of the way so that they won't even have to take it. So that we won't even have to take it, Lord. So, Father, we love you. We thank you. We believe in you. We ask you for every little minute thing in our lives, Lord God, from the pandemic to finances to our health to our families to our finances to our church community, Lord God. We ask you for every little thing because you are the one that supplies all of our needs. And you are the ones that co cover us with your blood. Lord. You're the one that covers us. You're the one, like Psalms 91 says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him will we trust. Not in vaccines, not in Fauci, not in this one, not in that one. In Him will we trust. And you know what it says? Surely, for sure, you shall deliver us from the, from the hand of the fowl and the snares. Lord God, and you tell us a thousand may fall out our side and ten thousand may fall out our hand on our side, but it shall not come near us. No plague shall come near my dwelling. Amen. Why? Because we love you and we stay under your wings, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for Shabbat. We yeah. thank you for today. We thank you for the word. And we ask that everything that is said and done in this place be all you and none of us. In Yeshua's mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 interest in this too because my uh, how many of you know my uh, cousin died at, at, at the World Trade Center right. his name is Manny Gomez Jr. and uh, he worked for Fuji Bank and uh, matter of fact he passed away in the second tower uh, 
uh, he was on the 80th floor. So let's play this video and, and let's remember those who passed on. But the video has a little message for us. I want you to listen to it. It was all just too much. What we were watching couldn't be real. Our minds, our souls, refused to believe. The enormity of it all. The shock soon turned into sorrow. As we realized so many people would not be going home to their loved ones that night. The grief was uncontainable. The missing, the unaccounted for, their pictures and the pleas that accompanied them were cries for help. He was my best friend in the world. He was a great dad and he's hoping he would still be a great dad. If not, we love you, Roman. And expressions of hope that somehow, some way, the unthinkable had not happened. There was heroism in the air that day. The way the passengers and crew refused to let the terrorist turn a plane above Pennsylvania into a bomb. Mm -hmm. The way so many people in the World Trade Center helped their friends and colleagues and complete strangers to safety. The way the firefighters, law enforcement, and EMTs gave little pause to entering buildings they knew they'd never escape. We were numb for weeks. The pictures from the Pentagon, the fire there that took days to extinguish, the hollowed out field in Shanksville, where United Flight 93 was forced to the ground. The pod, the search for survivors, for remains. They said the air there was safe. Those who were there knew that couldn't be true. We watched a lot of funerals and learned over time the life stories of those we lost. And as the accounts of selflessness poured forth, we were inspired, we were in awe. How, we wondered, could they have done what they did? As heinous as those acts of terrorism were, what resulted was the opposite, we think, of what was intended. For a good long while afterwards, it felt like we were a United States. It was a great thing. The idea that there's more that unites us than divides us. God bless America. So as the bells ring this morning, as prayers are offered and names read, perhaps we'll all do well to stop and listen and remember. And I don't want to be Pollyanna, but I really want to believe deep down inside that there is a day in our future again when we're all going to feel that way, when we're all going to feel like one nation. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. We need it right now, Harry. We sure do. Thank, Thank you. you. It's beautiful. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Well, let's take a pause. Let's yeah. die. Let's remember. <laughs> let's absorb it. Yeah. And we'll let Al take us. Well, you know what? That's the prayer we all should have. That we be united again one more time. Our country cannot stand divided anymore. Amen? So let's remember always 9-11. I know you, uh, you guys do, but uh, continue to pray for those who passed on. And uh, I just want to say a real quick prayer uh, for this. So let's bow our heads uh, and remember to the 19th. I can't believe it's 19 years already. 19th anniversary of 9-11. Again, we come to you, Father, because you are a powerful God. You are a refuge in our strength, and we turn to you for peace and security as we call the 9-11 attack a tragedy. We thank you for the bravery and the sacrifice of those who save lives as firefighters, first responders, rescue crews, and even the people aboard United 93. We ask you to comfort and strengthen the family and friends of those who died, give healing and patience to the 
survivors of the attack who are living still today will continue physical and psychological pain. And those who survive feel gratitude, not guilt. Uh, again, I assure each person whose life changed forever of your protection and strength. Dispel the nightmares, the silence, and the anxiety. May we learn to depend on the security only you can offer. And Father, we ask you to guide the choices of our world leaders. Give them wisdom and discernment, not only as they work to resolve the lasting effects of 9-11 attacks, but also they try to, again, destroy terror of all sorts and genocide and division and racial hatred. Father, may that dispel right now in Yeshua's name. Father, we ask for unity to come. We need our nation to be united as one, just like they were in that video, how they were united. That never mind the color of our skin, they were all united. Never mind what they believed in, or who God that they served, but they came together as one. And we ask you for that unity and peace to overwhelm us right now and unite this nation as one. And we thank you for your divine direction for all people to live in unity and in peace. Yes. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, we pray. Yes. And everybody say amen. 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 That should be our prayer today. Amen. All right, let's get into the word of God because we have a lot to cover. And uh, I just want to... The Word of God is so profound because we are basically at the end of the Torah portions almost. We just have a few to cover in the next couple of weeks. I want you to make a note of it that next Shabbat is Rosh Hashanah. It's a new year. 5781. Amen. amen. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. amen. And uh, we, we, we pray that you all join us. We're going to have a, a special uh, service for Rosh Hashanah, of course, and uh, share the word and just worship our God and King. And uh, we encourage that everybody would join us on that day and be united as one, as a congregation. But uh, let's go to Deuteronomy 29, because we're going to talk about today something that is called Nitzavim. Nitzavim. And if I could get my uh, easel up here, I forgot to get my easel, my board. Yes. Uh, and you can write that down. Nitzavim is spelled N-I-T-Z-A-V-I-M. Okay? And Nitzavim basically means, are you standing? Turn to somebody and say, are you standing? Are you standing? Say, no, I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but are you standing? Are you standing on God's word? Amen. Are you standing on his truth? Amen. All right? And uh, so this is a real pro profound Torah portion because Netzavim in Hebrew means are you standing? And the context of this relates to standing firm and choosing life, being steadfast, being disciplined, and becoming a strong leader. How many of you know that we are all called to leadership? Amen. All of us. When Moses made the statement, Israel was standing before the formidable and grand creator and leader of the universe. Today, you are standing. And you are reading this Torah portion. And if you have made it to this point, come on. How many of you so far have made it to this point? Yes. Amen. Amen. Regardless of anything that has happened in your life, you are still standing. Amen. 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 You are standing on the brink of a new frontier. 
You are standing at the brink of a new season. We're coming into 5781, a new year. And we pray that 5781, there's a lot of prophecies coming out that I'm going to share with you about 5781. And I believe it's going to be better than we have experienced so far. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. So you are standing in the moment of time where to decide whether you get to advance. And it's up to you. You know, whether you're going to advance or you're going to stay stuck where you're at. Some people just don't learn. They just, year after year, they stay stuck. They don't move. They don't grow in the things of God. But we have to pray that we're going to advance in the next season of our life. And the way that happens is by standing to obedient to God's instruction. And the last instruction that he gave you, you have to, everybody has their own personal instruction that he gave you. And remember, I always look at, I always look at people, when people fail for one reason or another, I always ask them the question, what was the instruction God gave you last that you, not, that you did not fulfill or complete? But most likely, you did not complete that word that God gave you. God gave you something to do, and you didn't do it. Come on. It's real quiet in here right now. Everybody say amen to that. Amen. So, turn to somebody and say, stand. Stand. Amen. Say, be strong. Be strong. And be bold. And be bold. Amen? Amen? Because you know why? Because God, our God, has gone before me, gone before you, and given you victory, come on, over the enemy, over the nations, over COVID, whatever. Amen? The nations that your forefathers were part of, that opened the door to the cultural transgression and iniquities, the nation that seeks to overtake you mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually. The nations of fear. The nations of depression, dysfunction. Think about that. How many of you, I mean, how many, come on. How many of you got a testimony? We all, we all have gone through, I mean, all of us have a testimony. And we have gone through stuff, man. We are, we're here by a miracle. I'm here by a miracle. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've, I've, I've experienced a lot of stuff that I did not want to experience. But you know what? I'm still standing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, as we go into this Torah portion, I want you to choose and choose one thing. I want you to put your hand on your heart. Okay, which is the spirit. Okay, let me turn this up a little bit. It got a little bit. I'm getting cold here. Wow. Well, the air conditioning is kind of. Hallelujah. The air conditioning is, is nice. I thought you were going to shut it off. The air conditioning is good here. So, how many? Anybody cold? Because I feel cold. Anybody cold? Oh, praise the Lord. It's a little, it's a no, the air conditioning is nice. I mean, I like it the way it is. So I don't need the fan today. Sometimes the air conditioning, sometimes you guys are freezing, so I have to keep the air conditioning high and keep the fan on me. Yeah, right. But today is perfect. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like it the way it is. <laughs> but I want you to know, I want you to put your hand on your heart, on your spirit, and say, I choose to freely choose God and what's good. Amen? Choose God and choose what's good. Amen? You know, there's enough, there's enough hate, there's enough anger in the world today that we don't need. Amen? And this is a call from heaven. I believe that God is calling us to do that in these last days. This is the concept of a free will that God has given to mankind. He gave you a will to choose. 
And God wants you to choose God and choose good. Everybody say amen. Amen to that. Amen. Okay? Now, I want to cover just a few things over this tour portion. And if we can, let's go to Hebrews 12. Normally we'll be going to the Torah, but today we're going to go to the Brit Hadashah. For those who are not familiar with the word Brit Hadashah, it means the New Testament in Hebrew. Brit Hadashah. And let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to go to verse 14. For this world is not our permanent home. How many of you know that? Yeah. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Yeshua a continuing sacrifice of what? A praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that pleases God. Hebrews 13, I'm sorry. Wow. Hebrews 13, I'm sorry. I said 12. Hebrews 13, 14. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm going to. I should have said 13. I mean, I don't know why I had 13. Well, I don't know. Maybe God wants us to read 12, too. I don't know. Let's see. What, maybe. Let me. Let me uh, that was good. I mean, I, I forgot someone to turn to. Amen. But maybe God wants me to look at Hebrews 12. And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to see if I can make copies of these today. If somebody gave me this. This is cool. You know, I, I always said this before, and somebody came up with it. I should have made this myself. I've always said there's 31 Proverbs in the Bible, right? 31 Proverbs? Yes. And there's 31 days in the month, normally. Yes. And so there's a breakdown of every... Proverb for every day, Amen. and uh, and it gives you specific scriptures. I'm going to read what it what it pertains for today, but and I'm, I'm, we're going to make some copies and give them to you, okay? So you can have that, okay? But let's look at Hebrews 12. Let's see what Hebrews 12, 14 says. Look at this. Wow, this is cool. Work at living in peace with everyone. Antifa. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. All Lives Matter. Work at living in peace with everyone. Yes. You have to work. You know, you know that living at peace with somebody takes work? Yes. It doesn't come naturally. I know. Right? I have to work at peace with my wife every day. It doesn't come easy. Come on. Working, think about it. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy, will not see the Lord. Because again, some people don't care about God. The thing is that you have to live holy, you have to do good, and if that person receives you, fine. If he doesn't, well, you walk on. You keep on going. It says, now 15, verse 15, look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root uh -oh, of bitterness grows up in, to trouble you, corrupting many. And there's a lot of roots of bitterness out there today. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be there. 
Come on, everybody say amen to that. Amen. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. So sometimes we make mistakes, you know, and, you know, and again, but it is, it is a good thing about all of this. God is a loving God. He is a forgiving God. If we truly repent, and this is what our, our nation needs to be doing, repenting more than ever before. Amen? Now, this is going to lead, I, I, I don't have time to, you should have read this Torah portion on your own. I, I, I just want to touch on a couple of things on this Torah portion. The bottom line, what God wants us to put on, I want you to say this, I'm going to put on this, this day, the garments of salvation. Amen? Amen. And the garments of salvation are also the garments of deliverance. Yes. Amen? Amen? This is what you want. This is what you want on this day. So continue to read again uh, this Torah portion because we're going to get into next week. Uh, probably we're going to try to do is uh, uh, finish off some things that we need to do in Deuteronomy and then talk about Rosh Hashanah and then we're going to get into the new Torah portion starting in Genesis. And God is leading me to do some good things with those Torah portions. So continue to. Be faithful and show up. Everybody say amen to that. All right? Okay. Now. 13, 13, 14. What? The scripture that the first 15 said was to be. Well, well, the first one was Hebrews 13, 14, and 15. But but we read that. I read that. And then now we're going to read we read the, uh, Hebrews 12. Maybe I, I did tell you to turn there first. But we read both of them so you can see. Because the. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 14 we read before. Okay? He says, for this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, now, let's get into this battlefield of the mind. I love this <laughs> teaching. Today, I left off last week that uh, we were talking about worry and doubt, a doubtful mind, a worrying mind. A fearful mind. Today we're going to talk about a judgmental and critical and suspicious mind. Hello. Let's go to Matthew 7. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. A judgmental Critical and suspicious mind. And that's the title of this message today. <coughs> a judgmental, critical, and suspicious mind. Even Elvis Presley sang suspicious mind. <laughs> that came to mind right now. Just, I'm hearing that song. And it's El Elvis singing suspicious mind. <laughs> I, you, I like Elvis. Yeah, Elvis was a cool guy. Thank you very much. All right, Matthew 7, verse 1. Of course, Messiah is speaking. He says, do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Amen. Hello? Do not judge others, and you will not be judged, Antifa. Hmm. Those radicals out there. Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. How many of you know that whatever you do unto others, it will end up happening to you? Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. That's why it's good to do good to others, because whatever you make happen for somebody else, 
I was always talking about prayer today, about praying for somebody else. When you pray for somebody else, for good things to happen to them, how many of you know God will make it happen for you? Amen. That's how God works. But see, but we, we, want our, we want our first before we, we give anybody else anything. Yeah. yeah. And that's not the way God, God that's the opposite of the way God works. God says, first give, mm -hmm. and it shall be given unto you. Amen. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So a judgmental going to go on. So it says, do not judge others that you will not be judged. In verse 2, for you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Hello? In verse 3, and don't worry about a speck in your friend's eye. Because we're always pointing. Oh, look at you. Stop pointing. Because every time you point, remember, look, you got three looking right at you. Three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Coming right back at you saying, don't be pointing. Judge just look in the mirror and start judging yourself. And you're gonna judge anything. Amen. Right? Now, so let's look at this. Every time I, uh, I, I study the word, you know, and, and God gives me some insight on all this stuff, a lot of torment, and this is like I've experienced this in so many years of counseling and dealing with people and uh, the experiences that I've had. A lot of torment comes to people's lives because of a judgmental attitude. Man. When I ever see somebody very judgmental, man, they are miserable people. Oh, yeah. Hello. Have you ever seen that? I mean, they are not happy people. So all the torment, you see the torment of people because of a judgmental attitude and criticism. They're always criticizing everything. They're very suspicious of everything. Many, many relationships are destroyed by these enemies. Everybody say enemies. Amen. What are the enemies? Write these down. Judgmental enemy. Bad attitude enemy. Criticism enemy. Suspicious enemy. These are called enemies, folks. These are demonic activities. The mind, how many of you know this, is a battlefield. Amen. Your mind is constantly, I'm telling you, is either in a positive state or in a negative state. Hello? Amen. I would like my mind to be in a negative state. I've had enough of that in my life. Amen? Amen. Thoughts like, I think. You ever see that? You ever hear that? Oh, I think. Can I say something? When you say, I think, you know that that could be a tool of the devil? And he will use that to keep maybe, I think, well, it will give a person, I think, to be lonely. <laughs> it could make a person be lonely in their mind. Being judgmental, opinionated, always having an opinion about something. And they always kind of come with, well, and they always say, well, with all due respect, can I just tell you this? In all due respect, I'm going to insult you. <laughs> Judgmental and opinionated and critical. These are the demonic, demonic activities. Because if you look at judgmental, opinionated, and critical, these are three sure ways to see a relationship dissolved. How many of you ever had a relationship that just got dissolved for one reason or another? And maybe it went on for a while, but it got dissolved. If you look back, what really started it? What, what caused it to be dissolved? Most likely these three guys, these three demons. There was some judgmental, there was a lot of opinionating or opinion, and there was a lot of critical Statements being made. You got 
of fighting at each other all the time. Satan wants you to be lonely. He wants to get you on your own. He wants to isolate you. He wants to reject you. He wants you to be rejected. So he attacks our mind in these areas. Think about it. What does judging mean? Yeah, let's look at how God looks at it. What is really judging? What does judging mean? Well, judgment is defined. Let me, you might want to write this down. Judgment is defined as a decisive passed on the faults of others and it's a cross reference to the word condemnation. Let me say that again. Judgment or judging is defined as a decision passed on, or in other words, you're going to pass on the faults of others and as a cross reference to the word condemnation or to judge is to form an opinion. It's a sentence. And sometimes it could be a death sentence. Hello? It's real quiet in here right now. People are thinking, uh oh. I think I went overboard. God is the only one, watch this now. God is the only one who has the right to condemn or sentence. Amen. Not you. You are not Holy Ghost Junior. Amen. <laughs> Amen? Now we try to be. All right? None of us has the right to condemn or sentence. Amen. And when we judge, we are setting ourselves up as, you know, as God in this life. And there's only one God. See, that's what the devil does. What does the devil do more than anything? He is what? He is the accuser of the brethren. He's always accusing you, condemning you. Come on. Always putting you down. You're not worthy. You're no good. You know, nobody loves you. Come on. Hello. And who will use every excuse? He used every tactic. None of us have sh showed, not even, how many, so far I haven't seen no, to me, even though we were created in the image of God, I don't look at you as a God. Thank you. Hello. Amen. So you have no right to judge me. Right. Or condemn me. Amen. Really. Even if I've done bad things, you have no right. Now, of course, God wants us to discern when somebody's bad. Like I, you know, I'm thinking about somebody right now who's bad, a bad person. You know who's a bad person, I think, in this world that's creating a lot of havoc? His name is George Soros. Amen. George Soros. You know who that man is? That man has, he's a billionaire who's made his money, really, in an evil way. If you know who he was, he was born in Hungary during World War II. His father, they were, they were both Jews living in Hungary, and they changed their life. They changed their religion from being Jews to, to Catholics, right. to avoid the Holocaust, yeah. to avoid the gas chamber. And then they ended up buying homes. His father was took the homes that the, the people got displaced to go to the Holocaust, bought them at a real low price, and then sold them after the war for more money. Oh, yeah. So he got his money illegally, in a way. And George Soros has done so many followed up and so many different things. He did that whole thing. And now he's taking the money that he's making. Every time you see something going on, all the riots that are going, you think these rioters that are going, all these riots, most of those riots are not even from the state. Right. They're being paid to do that. 
and yeah. paying well. Some of them are being, some of them were, uh, uh, even in Washington when they had a convention, some of those people that were rioting and coming against the people that were coming out, you know what? They were, they were, living, they were staying in hotel rooms, $500 to $1,000 a night. Yeah. Right. Who paid for that? That's an evil person. Yep. But guess what? His day is numbered. Yes. Amen. They're on the trail already. Don't worry, he's gonna get his. But he's behind. He's be any every time you see somebody get voted in, you know that you know it's not a good person, George George is behind it. He's paying for somehow, some way, something to be, to, and, and don't you think he's not gonna try everything possible to destroy what's going on right now in America. That's a bad person. But I'm not there to judge him either. Only God can judge him. I'm discerning what kind of person he is. I know what kind of person he is. And you know what he's going to do? I pray for him. And I, hey, God can turn him around. You never know. Amen. King Nebuchadnezzar was a bad person. And God turned him around. Amen. He wanted to kill all the Jews. God turned him around. And we pray that he, he gets changed and repents. But judging again, we had no right to condemn. None of us are God. Everybody say amen. amen. Look what happened to Lucifer. Look what happened to Lucifer when he tried to be God. Hello. People are critical, and I'm going to give you some insight. Why are people critical? People are critical because people always see the wrong. Hello. And not the right of a person. I don't know what it is. We always have a habit of picking out the wrong of a person. Instead of start picking out the good things. It may be one or two things. You may have 15,000 bad things, but we also, you may have one or two good things. Why don't you just focus on the one or the two good things? Amen. Hello? And maybe that person will turn around. The more, see, the more we judge, the more we condemn, the more melancholy we become, the more controlling personality, hello, we could become, and the more we see the wrong or the negative. Sometimes we focus more on the negative than the positive. Yes. Hello? Do we have coronavirus? Is, is, is that a virus out there? Yeah. I don't know, okay, is, is it bad? Absolutely. And I'm not focusing on the bad. I'm focusing that I'm healed. I'm focusing that I'm protected. I'm, I'm focusing that God has, by the blood of Yeshua, covered, is covering me, that I got angels around me protecting me, and, and I proclaim that I'm not going to get sick. Amen. Hello. I rebuke that thing. Everybody say amen. Amen. But I know that we must realize that we have our own way of seeing things. I know, we do. And we see things the way, we filter things the way we have been brought up or some bad experience. Hello. If, for example, uh, I had a, uh, a married couple one time that came to me and the wife was just so critical and judgmental of her husband. And he and her husband was a good man. And she just didn't know how to treat him right. It was because she had an abandonment spirit. When I calculated everything with her, and she was abandoned by her father. Hello? And then when she got she this was this was her first marriage, then her, then her first marriage, she felt again abandoned, she felt abandonment, that spirit, and she created that first marriage to go haywire because she never trusted that husband either and, and never treated him right, so he, could, he gave up. And so now the pattern is continuing. Why? Because they have an abandonment spirit. And if the husband was late at work, or if, if he didn't call 15 times a day, hello? Am I talking to somebody out there? Yeah, some people, you know, they're married, they, they got to text 15 times a day, 
and they got to call every 20, well, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you going? Uh, well, where, how come you're not home yet? Hello? Shoot that thing. <laughs> I can't live like that. And no one can. Why? Because they feel abandoned. That they, so they need that nurturing. They need that person. And they, they think by doing that, they can control it. And what they're doing, they're pushing the person away. More. You can't do that. Hello? So we filter things differently. Everybody say amen. amen. All right? And we see things differently. See, we like to tell people what we think. You know what? Sometimes I don't care what you think. I care what God thinks about me. Amen. Amen. See, we want, to, we want to tell them what we think. What I think may be right for me, but not right for you. Amen. Hello? His opinion, in other words, your opinion or his opinion is just as good as mine, right? And mine is just as good as his. We got to look at it that way. See, they are, sim they are simply different. Now, let's go to Romans 12. Let's go to Romans 12 and see this in Scripture. <clears throat> Romans 12, verse 3. I, I love this verse. <clears throat> Judgmental. Condemning suspicious mind. In Romans 12, verse 3, It says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give you each this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Hello. Be honest in your evaluation of others. Does it say that? Amen. Yeah. Does it say others? Nope. What does it say? Yourself. Be honest in your right vision of what? Yourself. Yourself. Say me. Me. Say me. 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 Come on. Me. Evaluate you before you evaluate anybody else. Hello? And and I and you know, and, and you are not. Jesus. Amen. You are not the Holy Spirit. Amen. So before you evaluate somebody else, see, only God has the right to evaluate. God has the right to condemn. Not us. Yeah. Everybody say amen. Amen. Okay? Now, so do you see you see what I'm saying? Judgment and criticism, write this down. Judgment and criticism are the fruit of a deeper problem. And that problem is pride. Hello. Pride. Judgment or judgmental or judgment and criticism. Those two turkeys. Remember, you gotta look at them as a demon. Judgment is a demon. Criticism is a demon. Judgment and criticism are the fruits of a deeper problem. And, and the majority of that problem is pride. In other words, when the I in us is bigger than it should be, hello, everything is about I, 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 when the eye is bigger than it should be, it will always cause problems. The Bible over and over again reminds us about being high-minded. Here again in this verse is very plain. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourself. Measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. Hello? Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. 
Now, so the Bible again is reminding us about being high-minded. Remember, if God has given you a talent, okay, and everybody has a gift or a talent, everybody does, some kind of gift, you know, we are all born with some gifts, and you know, and, and there are, uh, we talked about this before, maybe, maybe people have asked me to teach it again, about the motivational gifts, okay, and you find them big, big, really in this chapter. Uh, let's, look, let's look at it. Let's go down in chapter 12, in verse 6. Because if you, if you go back to uh, what we just read, it says, just as our bodies, in verse 4, have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. Isn't that something? Amen. And His grace, God has given us different gifts for certain things to do well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, now see, some people have that gift of prophecy or seeing the way God sees things. But can I tell you something about prophecy? Prophecy sometimes also have foot and mouth disease. True. Because they speak what they see instead of praying for, <laughs> hello? When God shows you something, pray. Why are you showing me this? And if God wants you to, if God wants you to share it with someone, then share it. But some people can't wait to just open up their mouth. And maybe that was not for them, maybe it was for you. Thank you. Because prophecy is seeing the way things God, the way God sees things. Right. Okay? How many of you have ever been around a person that's very opinionated? Anybody? Very opinionated. Have you ever known anybody that way? Do you like being around them? Mm -hmm. Huh? I mean, don't, they make you feel, you, you shy away from them, don't you? Because the moment you get around that person, that person's going to say something that you are not going to like. <laughs> so the gift of prophecy, all right, is one ability, but there's pros and cons of that gift. Speak out with, in other words, it says prophecy to speak out with such, with much faith as God has given you. Okay? The second gift. Now, so the first one is prophecy, which is very important. And some people have it. And that's called the eyes of the body. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. Some people just have a gift of serving. You know that? You go, you go, they go to your house and they want to serve. They want to do the dishes. They may even mop your floor. And you didn't even ask them. Really? That's a gift of serving. Some people just love to serve. Okay? And then you have the gift of uh, of serving, and then it says if you are a teacher, so some people have the gift of teaching. All right, it says if you have that gift, teach well. Hello, amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay. And a teacher, if you have said a teacher, they're a researcher. They're like a Sherlock Holmes. All right, they always searching for information. And sometimes they have more information than, than anybody else Amen. to share. Amen. Okay? So you have the, the prophecy is the eye of the body. Yes. The server is what? The hands of the body. Yes. Then you have the teacher is the mind of the body. If your gift is, is to encourage others, be encouraging. That's the mouth. Some people have a gift of encouraging. Don't you know that? I like people like that. Every time they come around, you're the encourager. And that's the kind of person I want to hang out with. That's the critical one. Right? And then there's giving. Now, some people have the gift of giving. Okay? Some people do. Now, watch this. The person that has the gift of giving, 
Now, I know you would like to find that person out because you want to get something. <laughs> but most of the time, and I would say 80% of the time, the person that has that gift, they won't give it unless the Lord speaks to them. Right. Amen. That's the way it should be. Amen. They have to, see, giving is a good thing. All right? And it says if you have the gift of giving, give generously. All right? If your gift is, is then encouraging others, and then, and then leadership ability. Some people have the gift of leadership. They just have that gift. They become good administrators. It says, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have the, the, the gift of showing kindness to others, look at that. Somebody has the gift of showing kindness. That's a gift of compassion. Do it gladly. Now, the gift of compassion is a good one because that's the heart. The, the, the leadership is the shoulders. And the, and the, and the government should be upon the shoulders. Amen? Okay? So you see that everybody has a gift. And we should be asking God what, that, what gift that we have. So with every gift you have been given, use it for the glory of, the, of God. Amen? Okay? I'm almost winding down. Because I see the time clock is really running. So you understand that being opinionated and being critical is out of God. Everybody say amen. Amen. All right. Now, remember, if God has given you the talent and the ability to do great things, then do it. Because it comes from God. It comes from Him. Exaggerated opinion. Even opinions that are exaggerated. Have you ever had anybody exaggerate an opinion? Yes. I mean, they get exaggerated. <laughs> amen? An exaggerated opinion. Causes us to look down on others. Sometimes, you know, we look down on people. This is detectable. Everybody say, that is detectable. Come on, say it. That is detectable to God. Amen? Okay, let me give you another scripture real quick. Galatians 6. Galatians. Galatians 6, verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you, uh oh, there we go. You who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. Not go tell everybody in the church. Hello? Man. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Hello? Amen. Verse 2. Share each other's burdens. Yeah, there you go. Share each other's burdens in the same way to, uh, in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Amen. Yeah. Hello. Take that and eat it. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Everybody say amen. Amen. Now, what this is showing us is how to respond to the weakness. When we see somebody at fault, they have a weakness that we observe in others. We must have holy fear. Everybody say holy fear. Holy, holy fear. fear. In other words, holy fear of pride and be careful of judging others or being critical of them. We should pray with them. They cannot help you with this. You know, I know you're going through something instead of being critical. Amen? Okay. Can I give you another one more scripture and then we close? Because they got three minutes left. Romans 14. <laughs> Oh, 
Romans 14, verse, one verse, verse 4. Who are you to condemn someone else's servants? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. Amen? Amen. So be careful. How would you like someone telling you or your, even your children how to act or dress? How, how many of you like that? Okay? This is what God is saying. Each of us belong to God. See, I belong to God. Right? Now, and even if we have weaknesses, God is able to make us stand and to justify us. We answer to God. I answer to God. I don't answer to anyone else. I don't answer to each other. So then we are not to judge one another in a critical way. The devil is very busy, folks. Listen to me. Assigning demons to place judgmental, critical thoughts in people's minds. Sometimes we may hear and tell ourselves, it's none of your business. Hello? Amen. Just tell people when they ask it, none of your business. Yes. You see, being judgmental and critical can harm religiousness and hurt you, even your relationship with God. Remember, your action won't change. And you, may, you may want to write this down. I'm going to ask you to repeat it. Your actions won't change until your mind does. I want you to say that with me. So my action, my action won't change, won't change until, my mind does. until my mind does. All right? In other words, when you're having trouble with your mind in this area, I want you to read something. This is the last verse, Matthew 7. Let's read it again, Matthew 7. In verse 1. We started out with this verse. Do not judge others that you will not be judged, but you will be treated as you are treating others. The standard you use in judging is a standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about expecting your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? Amen. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. I'm not putting a hypocrite now. God is. First, get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people also who are unholy. Throw, don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. There's some people that are just I'm not going to receive what you got to say. Right. Amen? You got to mark them and leave them. Amen? And I've always said this, when wrong people leave you, wrong things stop happening. Amen? amen? Everybody say amen. 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 Let's, so let's pray. We're going to continue this next week. We're going to go about bringing again this judgment to a close. If I say amen to that. Amen. Your actions won't change until what? Mind Your mind does. Let's pray. Hallelujah.
want you to put your hand on your heart. Put your hand on your heart and one on your mind. I mean, right here, the spirit. And it's where your heart. <coughs> heart of man is here. Say, God of Abraham. God of Abraham. Isaac and Israel. I shall fear no evil. Think evil. Speak evil. Because I choose this day to make my Lord and Savior my refuge. And the Most High shall live in my dwelling place. Therefore, no evil thing shall teach me, nor shall any sickness come near my home. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are mighty and that your angels take charge over me and also charge of my home and my influence. You shall faithfully Keep me in your holy way. You order my steps. You take pleasure in my prosperity and health. And I thank you, Lord, that I shall prosper and be in health as my soul prospers. As I choose to make your secret place my dwelling place. Thank you, Lord, that your angels will lift me up and guard me with their hand to protect and help me. Lord, I call upon you right now. Answer my prayer. Help me, Lord, to not be judgmental, condemning, or critical. Let me be a vessel of love, of peace, and of joy. Holy Spirit, who live in me, I can't do it without you. Guide me and teach me your holy ways. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that I will be satisfied with a long life, that you will reveal in me the fullness of your salvation freely given to me by the finished work of Yeshua Messiah. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together. Praise. Did you enjoy that? I hope. Amen. Did you learn something today? Yes. All right? We've got to be careful. This is practical stuff, man. This is stuff that we have to live by every single day. Because every day we got to deal with people. Everybody say amen. amen. You know what? And everybody... There's a lot of people out there that need the Lord. They need God more than ever. People need the Lord. Amen? Now, those who are watching us, let's give God due honor by giving our tithes and offerings to God. So everybody say amen. amen. All right? Come on, put your hands together and give them praise. Amen? Come on. God loves the cheerful giver. Amen? So let's give to the Lord today. What belongs to God? Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to ask you folks out there, you know, uh, you know we, uh, every week, because of the coronavirus, we have been, I hate to say this, we're running short. Every week we don't, we don't, we still don't have full capacity, we don't have everybody doing their part. We only have a, a certain percentage doing their part. So every week, last week we were short, I think it was $400. The week before that we were short $1,500. So you look at it, on a monthly basis, we're probably short uh, at least $2,000 a month to $2,000 a month. And that is putting a real kind of hurting on us for us to pay the bills, for us to sustain what we do. So I'm going to ask you to be faithful in your giving, okay? Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your tithes and offering. You know, we have PayPal. If you want to pay through PayPal online, 
You can mail it in, you can call Linda with a debit form or a debit card and she will take your debit confidential. Don't, don't be afraid to do that because everything is done confidential with confidentiality. And you know, and we'll take out what you ask us to do. But be faithful, continue to be faithful so we don't run into you know more deliverance in our in our ministry. We want to finish this year off good. And we want to go into our 21st year in January in good health financially. Okay? All we want to do is pay our bills. We don't go crazy with, fi with our finances. We don't do that. We have accountability and credibility. Amen? Amen. So continue to pray for us and continue to be faithful in your giving. All right? I want to pray quickly over that prayer. And as we're doing that, we're going to have a song we're going to play. Okay? And I love this song by Alan Slaughter, which means he's already provided. Okay, but let's pray. God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, I thank you for providing for us all that we need. Father, according to your glory and riches in Christ Yeshua, you are El Shaddai, all sufficient God. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are our provider. So, Father, we ask to give us wisdom over our finances. We ask for supernatural favor over our finances. And that you may increase those channels, Father, that people will, again, be spoken to by your Holy Spirit, be led by your Holy Spirit to give unto your kingdom. Father, even give us ideas to open doors that no one can close. And even close those doors that need to be closed. I pray and thank you in advance that we will always have what we need at the time we need it. And we will always have more than enough. We give you the praise and the glory in Yeshua's name and all God's people say amen. 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 Make your checks out to r.e.c.rec with a dot in between, okay? And we thank you for your faithfulness. The Bible says the good of the human being is that he was alive all over the years according to his riches and glory. So tonight, take your burdens and your cares to the Lord and leave it there. He's already provided.
be dismissed. We'll turn the lights on. Are we still recording? Yeah. We are? Okay. It's okay. Let's, uh, so we're going to dismiss. And after we do the Iranic prayer, if you could just hang out for just a, a few minutes, because I want to share something with you that I need you to do for me, okay? Uh, but I don't, want to, I don't want to put it on the video, okay? You know, it's just it's something we got to be concerned about, you know, of the nation. Let's lift up our hands to the Lord. And I want to just say thank you for all those who are faithful to our ministry. Continue to pray for our church. For those people who are still been missing since COVID-19 started. We pray that they will come back. If not, we pray for God to bring new people in. Amen. 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 So pray, invite people, Amen. encourage people to come. This is where the truth is being taught. Amen. So Father, we thank you, Father, for the opportunity to teach your truth and nothing but the truth. So Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless your people today. Guide them home, bring them home safely, camp your angels around them, and know what perform the best and shall prosper. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Yerakaka Adonai Mishpureka. Ya Adonai Panavaleka Mishpureka. Ya Sadonai Panavaleka Yasamaka Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord shine his face upon you. Amen. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. And grant you shalom peace. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah.